Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about a basic circuit, a very basic circuit, that I think everyone should attempt at least once in their electronics hobby. And I haven't actually attempted this before. It is a multivibrator. This is the generic kind of circuit for a multivibrator. You can find this one on Wikipedia. It just consists of two NPN transistor with collector, base, and emitter like that. And you see there are two kind of reflected circuits here. Two capacitors, four resistors. I'm going to go ahead and add LEDs in here, which is very common. And these two LEDs should flash in turn. It seems like a pretty cool circuit, and it seems pretty simple, and it seems like most of you guys should have these parts laying around. So how about we try building one? So the first step here is going to be component selection. So for my LEDs, I'm going to use white LEDs. For my resistors here, I'm going to use 47K on the base resistors and 47 ohms on the LED resistors. For the caps, I'm going to use electrolytic. I think you can use kind of any sort of cap as long as they're both the same value. I'm going to go 10 microfarads. And for these uh, transistors, I'm going to use the 2N3904s that I recommended in the what should you buy if you're a beginner video. So let's get those now. So here I've got my breadboard and it's time to install some LEDs. The LEDs are always the best part of these projects, right? I'm going to go here to number 27 on the breadboard. Again, positive side is usually the long lead. Uh, check them if you're not sure. I've had a bunch of these so I know what they are. So I'm going to go here to 11. Okay, so the LED portion, this portion here, is done. Let's do R4 and R1, which are 47 ohms. So I keep my LED, my LEDs, my resistors in these envelopes. So here we go, 47 ohms. Let's break two of them off. Put this back in the envelope. Okay, and I like to kind of give these a bend like that and then crop off the ends just so that the LEDs are pretty close to the breadboard and, and by LEDs I mean resistor of course Let me put this like this okay there's one same thing with the other one give it a slight bend crop off the leads one and two. There we go. We've got our two resistors. There and there. Good. Now we need to do these, the 47 uh, K ohms, which will be the base resistors. Same thing, a little envelope here, 47k ohms. Pull two of these out. Give them a bit of a bend. And crop the leads off. They also need to go into the power rail. So put them up there. The only problem with cropping the leads off is if you have big fingers, they're much harder to work with. But I think they look a lot neater on the breadboard, and especially when you guys are looking at it from the top, I feel like it looks a lot neater. Put this like this. Okay, 
Now that's done. What's next? So next up will be the electrolytic caps. These are 25 volt uh, 10 microfarad and we need to connect them between the 47 ohm resistor and the 47 K ohm resistor. Uh, if they're electrolytic this diagram shows that the positive should be towards the um, the LED rail because probably because there's more current on this side. So let's do that. So the negative on these electrolytics is the white band here. So the negative will face sort of the uh, trying to get that in. The negative will face this 47k ohm. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. kind of like that. See if I can even them out a little bit. There we go. Okay, now that's done. Now let's put it in our transistors. So our transistors need to go collector, emitter, base, but you see on the other side it's mirrored. So here's the transistors, this 2N3904s, and this side here is the collector, this is the emitter, and the base is in the middle. So I'm going to put the collector on this number 27 slot so it lines up with this 47 ohm resistor and I'll put the other ones just right next to it so we got the three wires sort of side by side by side Actually, I might move that up one okay so the base would be in the middle and the emitter would be on the bottom so for the other one I want to do the exact same thing but I want to rotate it around so the collector is on this side the emitter is on this side and the base is still in the middle. So same deal here. Just kind of poke them in there. There we go. You see how the transistors, the flats are facing opposite directions? Now we're almost done this, really. All that's missing is this connection here to go crisscross from the caps to the bases and the connection to ground. So we're almost there. So for the connection to ground, I'll take these tiny little links. These are just standard breadboard links. And I'm going to try to get that in there. It's getting pretty small and the camera's in the way, but that's okay. I'll deal with it. There's one. There's another. Okay. And now we just need the links in between. And so it should go from base, which is the not not on this 47K or this 47 uh, ohm resistor, go right beside here, and to the cap right there, the cap in the 47K. That's one. Same thing on the other side. So it should be right here. And it should go over to right there. Now theoretically if we turn this on it should work but I'm turning this on for the first time on camera so you know sometimes it won't work. Let's see. And there we go. It actually works. Hopefully the frame rate of the camera isn't messing with this. We've built a basic electronic circuit and it didn't take very long either. So I'm definitely not an expert on how this works, but I can kind of give you an idea, at least how I think it works. So what happens here is that although these components are exactly the same left to right, they're never exactly the same, right? There's always some slight variations. So one of these transistors will turn on first, and for this example, I think we're going to start with this one. So this one turns on. There's a lot of current flying, flowing down this way. This is a 47 ohm. This is a 47 k ohm. So what will happen is this this um, capacitor will charge up, and as it charges up with the positive here, it pulls kind of this side of the circuit negative, meaning that this transistor is off. Once this capacitor reaches full charge, it will then discharge, meaning this side this circuit here will become active. If this is active at you know the VCC potential then it'll turn on this transistor which will then 
allow current to flow through here, turning on this LED, this capacitor will start charging, and when it starts charging, it'll pull sort of this end of the circuit negative, turning this one off and restarting the, the cycle. Once this one fills up, it will discharge, meaning that this here will become positive, allowing current to flow this way, charging this capacitor and shutting off this transistor. I think that's how it works. It makes sense in my head. But uh, if you're smarter than I am, which you probably are, put it down in the comments below. This is the first time I built this circuit, right? So that's it. I feel quite satisfied building this nice little circuit on breadboard. I'm probably going to leave it on the breadboard and plug it in every time I need to be cheered up. Makes me feel good to be reminded sometimes that, you know, you can build something. Even if it's simple, makes you feel accomplished. Thanks for watching.